Hi Don, I gotta get this thing set up. Start video. All right, how's that? Good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're live on Facebook too. I don't know how that happened. Good morning, everybody. This is Rick and Don coming to you live from our homes, actually. So, uh, hopefully, uh, just gave myself a haircut, so I gotta be careful here. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna start having Sunday services. Been talking to um, Charity. Charity yesterday and um she's looking at the schedule and then uh, don and i are going to be out there at the veterans home next or tomorrow actually right don yes for to redo our orientation so we can go come see you guys live in person and then lord willing we will uh have our first sunday service i guess at the end of May, um, hopefully, the last Sunday in May or maybe the first Sunday in June. So until then, you uh, we get to spend time with you on uh, Zoom. So if you're turned in to Channel 1 out there at the Veterans Home uh, for the very first time on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock and you're like, who are these two kooks on... Uh, my TV. My name is Rick and and my partner there is Don and we are veterans also and uh, we've been doing Bible studies out there for um, probably three years now. It was a year before COVID and a couple years now of COVID so um, we love spending time with you every Wednesday morning. Uh, Don, how are you this morning? Doing good. I'm trying to practice being content. Yeah. <laughs> That's our word for today. Our word for today is content. And so what we use for these weekly devotions is our booklet that's called Word of God Words of God for the Heart. I don't know if you could see that with the shine or whatever, but uh, we're in booklet two, booklet two, okay, and we're on day 26, and the word is content, and that's why Don said he's practicing being content, and I think it's a good word for all of our hearts, content. I want to show you something here on the outside of my house just to show you there's my red white and blue and my marine corps flag flying proudly out there out, right. outside the home you just get those up um no it's actually my daughter anna gave that to me for a gift um oh, nice. years back so yeah. um so Content, you want to, hey Don, I was thinking that we should read probably verses 10, beginning in verse 10, and go to verse 14 to put the content of the verse in the context. Yeah. So if you want to open us in prayer, and then uh, any opening comments, or and then you want to read, that'd be great. Okay, Lord, we go. Uh... Grateful once more to be able to come to the veterans via the technology that we have. And looking forward, as Rick said, to being able to come out in person here. It looks like it's getting pretty close. So we're thankful for that. We pray for our word for today. It's content, Lord, and uh, I think it's an important. All your words are important, but uh, another important word for the heart today. And so, Lord, we ask you to bless this time. Bless the veterans, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't know if it's 
time for this comment or not, but I was thinking this morning that uh, I'll wait. I'll wait and see, see how this unfolds. Anyway, I'll let me read and, and uh, my mind's kind of gone sideways here on <laughs> Well, <laughs> Just, I'm always right? I'm always open for your comments and <laughs> your insight. You you're a wise man, so. Well, let me let me read this, and as we get into content, hopefully I'll have something to add that's worthwhile. Anyway, <laughs> verse ten it says, um, "But I rejoice." This is Paul talking to the Philippians. He said, "But I rejoice greatly that now, at last." <clears throat> Your care for me has flourished again, though you certainly did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak, and this is our verse, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. Amen. Yeah. So Paul is actually in prison when he writes this letter. It is one of the, what's called the prison epistles. And he writes Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon when he is in prison in Rome. So if you go to the book of Acts, you're talking about after um, the, the book um, brings him to... Uh, to Rome and he's waiting uh, trial before Caesar and so it says at the end of uh, Acts 28 it says um, then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented home and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. So it's during these two years that most people believe that Paul wrote uh, these letters back to these churches, to the people. You know, churches are people. Sometimes we think the church as an organization, but um, the word church in the New Testament actually is the word ecclesia, and it's, uh, the definition is one's called out from another. So when we are called out by the name of Jesus Christ out of the world, we may live in the world, but we become the church. Uh, ecclesia and if you read your Bible there is no membership <laughs> in the church when you accept and believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord then you become part of the church and so here Paul is writing to the people that make up the church in Philippi Philippi is the very first church that Paul planted when he got what's called the Macedonia call. He wanted to minister in Turkey and then kind of turn up and go north east into all of the Stans, Kazakhstan and um, all of those areas up there. But the Spirit did not allow him. And then... Um, Having received a dream and, and interpreting the dream, he believed that he was called to Macedonia, which today is northern Greece. And there's actually a little tiny country still called Macedonia. So, um, 
so he's writing back to this church. And, uh, you know, to put the content, which is the word, con which is the word content <laughs> today, spelled the same, content, uh, let's put it in context. Because if you just pluck a verse out of the Bible, you can make it pretty much say anything you want it to. You can actually, um, I've seen religions take the exact same verse that we use to teach a biblical doctrine, they take the exact same verse out of context and they make it turn up, they turn it 180 degrees and make it say the exact opposite of what it actually says. So, uh, Don did well and um, beginning in verse 10, so, you know, understanding he's in prison now, and gosh, if you if you read through his trip to Rome to get to prison, it was no uh, you know Disneyland cruise by any stretch of the imagination, um, or any of those fancy cruises Don's taken his wife on. Uh, but it says, "I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again." Though you surely did care, but you lacked the opportunity. So they've sent a gift package, you might say, to Paul in prison. And he's received it. But this isn't the first time that this church has reached out in love to bless this missionary. And then our verse. Not that I speak in regard to need, He's, he's not saying, oh, you know, thanks, you guys came in the nick of time, and, you know, um, boy, if I hadn't received that, and boy, if I, I don't keep getting those packages, you know, I don't know how it's going to go for me. He, he's not saying that. He's not, I'm not, I, I don't, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. So the first thing that jumps out to us is, um, number one, um, he's not asking for money. He's not asking this church for money. Um, you know, the church that Don and I are part of, we never ask people for money. Um, we never require people to give money to um, show their status or to maintain their status in the church that Jesus Christ created um, and he's using us to build. Uh, if you read your Bible, there there is nothing that um, requires that for "Quote unquote church membership." Um, in fact, I've seen some pretty sad cases of uh, the church that is supposed to be the place of blessings, that blessings flow out of. That you know, the church should be the charity, um, providing charity, not receiving charity. Right, Don? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's not what you can do for your church, but what, or how does that Kennedy verse yep. go? I yep. think they twisted that around a little, little bit. <laughs> not what you could do for your country, but what your, or not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. Yeah, they twisted it to not what your church can do for you, but what you can do for your church. Right. So, yeah, that's a good really. point. So anyway, he's not asking for money. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm thanking you for your gift, but let me make sure that I'm not I'm not asking you for a need. You know, I've, I've seen, Don and I have seen um, some pretty sad cases of, you know, people wanting to get back in good standing of their church. So they have limited to no resource. They have, um, you know, they're living on Social Security, uh, just barely getting by. And, you know, one of the requirements to get back in good standing is you got to, start giving the church 10% or, or you don't, um, 
you know, get uh, your card and you don't get your entry into heaven. And um, that's just a sad, sad deal. And it broke, uh, in one particular case, if you remember, Don, it just broke that man's spirit. It just broke his heart. Uh, so um, he's not asking for need. The second thing is, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And then he goes, I, I know how to be abased. And to be abased is to be reduced or lowered in rank or stature or, um, you know, lifestyle. He's like, I've learned how to be abased and I've learned how to abound. And uh, we'll get to that. But the, the word is, I have learned in whatever state I am. And I think that's a powerful statement that we need to learn to be content in whatever state we're in. And sometimes we are um, abased or we have a lower status or a lower um, rank or a lower um, quote-unquote American lifestyle. Uh, and we need to learn how to live within our means. But we also need to learn when we abound, uh, you know, that's a whole different kind of learning. Um, learning to be good stewards of what God has given to us. And um, when enough is enough. And uh, to owe no one anything. The Bible says, you know, except uh, love and, and, and grace. And, um, you know, the, the credit card lifestyle of our American world is destroying families. It's destroying people's, um, their fellowship with God, their fellowship with the church, being able to, to be doers of the word and not hearers only. They're so strapped uh, for money that because they haven't learned how to abound and they were abounding and they didn't weren't good stewards and now maybe they're a little bit abased and now you know there's that necessity not the desire for maybe a little bit more income to do something you know there's that necessity of a two income family and um you know we don't have time to you know take our kids to to church or church on wednesdays we don't have time to serve we don't have time to clean the church we don't have time to get involved in in all of the ministries in the church because we're always working we're always working uh to maintain that lifestyle so that word learned um you know I'm sure there's been a lot of learning in the veterans home uh, when you lived outside of the veterans home and now when you live inside the veterans home. And the word of God and Paul is encouraging you today to learn to, uh, to know how to uh, be a good steward and uh, to be a good Christian influence in whatever state that you're in. In. What do you think, Don? Well, a couple of, of uh, comments. First one, a little levity. Uh, you know, I like to listen to J. Vernon McGee, and uh -huh. uh, he thinks that Paul came from the state of Texas. <laughs> so he's, <laughs> he's talking about what state you're in, you know, so can you be more content in Florida than you can in Utah? <laughs> I think he took a, a turn there somehow in his in his preaching. But on a more serious note, the uh, are you familiar with Brother Lawrence? Yes. Oh yeah. He he wrote, he, he wrote a book. He was I guess he was like a cook in a. Uh, Monk commune or, or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, I read 
his book, and it's been about, I don't know, 35 years or so ago, but one of the things that was said in that hit me so hard that I had my friend, his wife, let's see if I can hold this up at all. Uh -huh. Right? And she did the calligraphy uh -huh. on it, but it's a comment from that book and from Brother Lawrence. I'm going to read it twice so you, so people can get it. <clears throat> it says that we ought to give ourselves up to God with regard both to things temporal and spiritual and seek our satisfaction only in the fulfilling of his will, whether he lead us by suffering or by consolation, for all would be equal to a soul truly resigned. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a difference. Anyway, I'm going to read it one more time. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. It says that we ought to give ourselves up to God with regard to things temporal and spiritual and seek our satisfaction only in the fulfilling of his will, whether he lead us by suffering or by consolation, for all would be equal to his soul truly resigned. That was Brother Lawrence. He was in about the 1600s. Mm -hmm. He was a monk in, in around the 1600s, but... Did you, you know, know did you that. know him did you know him personally? Well, in a previous life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I was a cousin or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we took another turn. <laughs> Jay Vernon don't have anything on us. For... I'm sorry. No, that <laughs> it's you know, that's a powerful it's a powerful statement. Yeah, we would be content all the time if we were able to. It, the book's called The Practice of the Presence of God, and it's really a, it's a little thin one like we like to read, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a good book. The Practice of the Presence of God, that will make us content, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, and, and one of my thoughts this morning was, uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's an easy thing to accomplish, certainly not all the time. At least it hasn't been for me. I'm sure you've had your moments. But, you know, stress, I'm hearing about another friend friend and stuff having some real issues right now. And I, I think it's, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I think it comes from stress. But uh, it seems like if you were content with whatever state you were in, your stress level would have to it'd have to go down you know yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's, up to, it's up to God to provide my boundaries it's up to God to provide uh, what he thinks I need yeah. and, and that sort of thing and yeah it, it would it would probably save a lot of lives in, in reality I just you know right uh, yeah. yeah yeah I love Paul's honesty you, you know he had to learn he had to learn um, you know nobody likes to go down quote unquote lower in stature um, right. lower in lifestyle lower in ability lower in mobility uh, nobody likes to go down um, in the flesh um, but um, you know he learned and he's, he was honest you know Paul was I mean he was he was famous you, you know he uh, they tried to worship him as a god. Uh, early in his first missionary journey, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, just he would be, God would endow him with power to heal people, raise people from the dead, and to speak to, you know, hundreds or thousands of people and, and just boggle the minds of those, you know, great thinkers there on the Iraq, Iraq, Aragapus, Iraq, anyway, up in that mountain in, in Athens, Aropagus, uh, you know, and, and now he's in prison, just sitting there, uh, can't do anything about it, you know, imprisoned, in, under house arrest, and I, I'm sure it took him uh, time to learn, you know, how to be content with the Lord. And I think writing some of these letters to, to the churches to build them up, uh, knowing Paul, the amount of prayer that he did was, you know, um, probably quadrupled. The uh, opportunity he took 
to influence the circle of influence, although it wasn't worldwide anymore. Um, you know, in, in some of his letters, he, he's like, hey, praise the Lord, all of Caesar's soldiers that have been assigned to me are now believers. Yeah. You know? So rather than, you know, sitting on his bunk and all sourpuss and, you know, God, what'd you do this to me for? I could be out there saving, you know, thousands and speaking and glorifying you. You know, he learned like, okay, the people that I have around me, I can influence. And I think that's a, a good point for, especially for the folks there in the veterans home, your mobility and uh, your availability to to um, move about this world is, is I'm sure, been severely uh, decreased. You, you're, and you've, you know, learned how to be a base in in that sense. But you know what? Look around. Uh, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself is. You know, do unto others as they would do unto you is the is the golden rule, and you have a whole community within uh, your small community. You have the whole community of the veterans' home. You still have your whole uh, set of friends that you can stay in contact. You still have your whole family, your extended family that you could be a blessing to. And so there's many, many ways. There's, I'm sure there's ways to get involved there at the veterans home. Many, many ways. So Paul said, I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. And that word has, it's, it's a term that's used, that you, would, you could use for a glass of water. When you look at that glass of water, that water is content. It's, it's content to be exactly where it's at. It's not um, in tumult trying to get out. It's, it, there's not an agitation. It's, it's not under some chemical uh, reaction that's causing it to, you know, rise up and foam and flow all over you know it's not a shake up a can of coke and pop the lid and poof, you know um that's what paul is is saying he's, he's like i've learned that it is well with my soul i've had to learn whatever state i am it is well with my soul it is calm within me. I'm not agitated. I'm not aggravated. I'm not a pain in the butt uh, to a lot of people around me. In fact, I'm in such a state that uh, I can be used to be a blessing. I can be a cool drink of water rather than uh, warm, shaken up, just waiting you know, anybody says the wrong word, wrong time, they come into your room, you know, at the wrong time, they give you the wrong, for, don't get you the right medicine or the appointment or the right form already. You're just a uh, shaken up warm can of Coke and man, that just poof, and you go off. Uh, you know, that's, that's not uh, a spirit led filled uh, life that Paul is talking about. Uh, he's talking about learning to be content like a cool glass of water. What do you think, Don? Well, I, I think as you're talking about learning, I, you know, our whole country is on a learning curve. And, you know, the United States has been blessed and it's hard to complain, but we're getting used to some things that we haven't had to deal with, you know, in a long time, shortages in the stores and the price of gasoline and, and um, can't get baby formula, evidently, that's hard to get a hold of. It. Right. So I think we're all kind of, you know, and we've got a long way to go before we're living like Denny, some of the missionaries where they, our missionaries where they teach, you know, the, the lifestyle's nothing like it is still here. 
but it seems like we're <clears throat> having to learn how to maybe get along with a little less and and uh, maybe, we, maybe we can't go on all those nice cruises anymore you know <laughs> right so you know we're we're and we need to learn how to be content yep not that we can't pray for those who are making these decisions and and uh, you know hope they make godly decisions there's a decision in the Congress right now that I think is going to determine whether God can continue to bless this country or not. You yeah. know, with the, the abortion issue. You know? Yeah, and the so, Supreme Court. Yeah, that yeah, um, yeah. decision that's supposed coming out. Um, well, yeah. even today they're, they're voting to codify abortion so that it takes it out of the states. It's kind of, kind of a reaction to the the leak at the Supreme Court that Congress is trying to do an, an end run, if you will, to make sure abortion stays the law of the land. Yeah. I don't know how we can ask God to bless us and kill 3,000 babies a day. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's one of my soapboxes. I won't mm -hmm. go too far on No, it. but you're, it's you know. It's hard to be content with that. Yeah, it's hard to be content sometimes. Um, you know, but you just think Paul, I mean, he's in prison, wrongfully imprisoned by an absolute crazy man, Nero, Caesar Nero. If anybody, if you want to look up Caesar Nero, I mean, the man was an absolute lunatic uh, to the point of killing people and, and burning the city and um, blaming the Christians and, you know, crucifying the Christians and hanging them up, burning them, and hanging them on poles to light the streets. Read about this guy. You know, if anybody had, you know, uh, you know, he could write this letter to the Philippians and say, this place is horrible. This country is horrible. It's got a horrible, you know, this empire is horrible, and we got to do this, and we got to do that. Instead, um, the book of Philippians is known as the book of joy. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't remember how many times the word joy is used in the book of Philippians, but this verse, not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content, to be joyful, to be full of joy. And we need to, you know, part of a Bible study is, you know, uh, reading it, uh, bringing understanding to it, but then application, Don, and I think that's where you're bringing us to, and in, in reality— you know, um, there's a lot of things, you know, the, the price of gas, you know, yeah, it's outrageous and, and, uh, you know, we can blame people and policies and stuff, but, um, you know, we're not living in Ukraine right now, That's right. you know, um, and we're not living in Burma, where I get reports from my friend Dave Eubank, you're my friend Dave Eubank, almost on a daily basis, that their own government is sending um, close air support um, attack helicopters and um, fighter jets to indiscriminately uh, bomb and strafe the ethnic minorities in uh, the eastern side of the country and then on the western side of the country bordering India there's millions of Rohingya uh, people their crime is to be born Rohingya uh, without a state they the Indian the country of India won't accept them because uh, they were born in in uh, Burma and the country of Burma won't accept them because they're of Indian heritage. And so there's millions of people on this border and they're, gosh, their refugee camps have just been ravaged by fires uh, in the hot, uh, dry time. And, you know, when you have these little bamboo huts and, and tent homes right next to each other a fire from a cooking pot you know start doesn't just burn down one little hut it'll burn hundreds or a thousand huts at the same all at the same time and these people who already had nothing now they they have less than nothing 
And so, yes, we need to learn to be content. Basically, what uh, I can't remember, and I'd give them credit if I heard, um, basically just about every single problem that you and I and the veterans in the veterans home and those watching online, every problem we have is a first world problem. You know, we can't get the doctor's appointment that we wanted to as fast as we want to. We, we can't get the, you know, the part for our car that we want and need as fast as we want to. We can't buy the new $100,000 pickup truck or uh, car, $75,000 or $50,000 car. Um, the price of housing, you know, is, is outrageous. We can't buy that you know, 2,700 square foot home or 3,000 square foot home that we want to uh, because it's outrageously priced. You know, during our, when we grew up, Don, the average, Joe looked it up, the average square footage for a home was 540 square feet. Wow. 500, go to, go to any, you know, when you drive up to Salt Lake, you know, go into those neighborhoods, those older neighborhoods. We're going to be driving up to Ogden here to spend time with our grandson. Drive some, down some of those central city um, blocks and look at the average size of the house. Guess what? They're 540 square feet. And yeah. people and lived... And they raised five, five kids out of them. Yeah. Believe it or not, you know, I, I lived, I grew up and I didn't die in a home that only had one bathroom and there were six of us, mom, dad, four kids, and yeah. we actually lived and survived. Yeah. yeah. I live better than 90% of the rest of the world. We do. So yeah. let me just read this. The next verse says, I know how to be abased. He knows how to be abased. Why? Because he said he learned how, whatever state I am, to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I pray that you and I can say that today. That we, in some ways, we may be a little bit abased and that is little slight and that's on a scale that, you know, we have to, it's like the, the teacher who, you know, everybody bombs the test. And so they had to recalculate the, the bell curve based on how bad everybody did, you, you know, um, we have to recalculate our bell curve based on, we live in the United States of America and we live on a different bell curve. You guys, um, Christians. I mean, we're going to heaven. I mean, we should live on a totally different bell curve uh, than, than anybody who doesn't have that hope. So I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. But the key is that Paul said he learned in whatever state he was in. It wasn't natural for him. We can learn a lot about ourselves by looking at ourselves in whatever state we're in. When we have less than others around us, are we content or do we complain and murmur? When we are abounding, are we content? But are we also generous and good stewards with what we have? That's the question. So today's word is content. And you have Paul's background and you have the content of the verse you have the context of the verse and um, he knew what it was to be content and he learned and I think we need to learn and relearn and we need to be able to say what Paul said um, we need to say it today say it with me not that I speak in regard to need for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content And of course, what makes us mostly content is our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, the hope that lies within us. Amen. Might be the only thing that makes us content. 
Sometimes, yeah. So any closing comments or whatever, Don? Otherwise, you can pray. You can read that uh, recommended prayer and then maybe pray us, pray us out of here. Okay, no, you know, I, I think, again, this being content and learning to be content uh, is a good way to live, but it also might save your life, I think, because yep. stress can, can yeah. kill you, you know. Anyway, yeah. um, Lord, I'll just read this prayer over today. Help me realize what state I'm in and, and, and show me how to be content. And enable my words and actions show others that I am content because I have learned to be content when I am found in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the word for today is content. And mm -hmm. Lord, we just ask that uh, all the people listening to this morning that hear this and the veterans uh, that uh, Rick and I uh, learn how to be content in, in whatever state we're in. So we're grateful for that another important word of God for the heart. Lord, so we thank you for it, and we thank you for again for the veterans, and we're looking forward to coming out there here towards the end of the month, hopefully, and uh, we just ask this. We thank you for all your provisions for us, Lord, so that we can be content. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Maybe Don and I are going to be out at the Veterans Home tomorrow afternoon from 3 o'clock to 5. We're going to go through orientation. Um, Miss Charity is going to be whipping us into shape and telling us all the do's and the don'ts. And um, I went to the doctor yesterday, Don. I had a physical. I got, holy moly, I don't know why I went there. I got a flu shot. I got a booster for... Um, uh, COVID, uh, my COVID card is running out of room to put all these shots. And then I got one for shingles. Oh, I wouldn't mind getting that one, I think. That's probably a good idea. Because the kind that I got back in 2019 wasn't as good. So now I had to get oh. a new kind of shingles uh, mm -hmm. shot. So they got, I got triple whammed. I felt like I was back in the United States Marine Corps. Oorah. Yeah, it should be bulletproof now. Right. <laughs> so I didn't hear back from Charity. I, I told her that we wanted to 